this, this morning, as I bring the word to you, I want to... I want to start off and just give you a, a framing. So we're talking about His People Worship, part three. So we've done two sessions before this, and I'll get, I'll get to that. But, you know, so often people think, well, you know, coming to church, I know church has started at 9.30, but, you know, they just sing a couple of songs. I know those songs. You know, and I was listening to a couple of songs while I was getting dressed, you know, kind of. I got, I got the songs thing done for this morning. I'm going to go for the main course. I'm going to skip the starters. You know, singing songs is kind of the starters. We'll go for the main course. We'll go for the word. You know, I like the word. And, and yeah, the song stuff, you know, let's just, uh, I'll listen some more on my way to church. You know, I'll listen to songs. I'll get the song thing going. You know, they're just kind of there to get you in the mood, you know, so you're ready to receive the word. Folks, if you, so many people, if you understand the power of praise and worship, you will not want to be one minute past 9.30. You will not want to miss it. If you understand the power of praise and worship and how much you need it, how much it shifts things in your life, how much it shifts things in the heavenlies, you will make sure you are here at 9.30. And, you know, if you have to leave early, okay, I don't love it when you walk out halfway through the message, but I'm like, guys, you don't understand the power of praise and worship. If you kind of roll in, yeah, you know, 5 to 10, something like that. Folks, the, 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 the Bible says, Psalm 149, verse 1, praise the Lord. Folks, that is the Bible. This is God's manual for life. Those words, praise the Lord, exclamation mark, that is from God to you and to me. Those are three words. Folks, that's an instruction to us. Praise the Lord. And God knows how He made you. You were made to worship God. You were made to praise God. You come alive. You are entering into creation design. You're the essence of who and what you were made to be when you're worshiping Him. You understand that you were made to praise God. We were commanded to praise God, etc. You will not roll in your five, uh, five to ten, I'm telling you. And He says further, sing to the Lord a new song. His praise in the assembly of the godly. Singing a new song. Folks, do you know, at the end of worship, when we were just praising, when Orne got us to declare the name of Jesus, folks, that was spontaneous. I don't know if you know, that wasn't scripted. It's not written on Orne's clipboard there. Okay, get the people to shout the name of Jesus. Okay, it's not there. That, did you see that flowed out of worship? That was a new song declaration. There are times where the Spirit of God breathes on a congregation, and you corporately, there's a, there's a word, there may be a phrase, there's a declaration that comes, and it's like the Spirit of God was unctioning us to declare the name of Jesus into high places this morning. Could you sense that? Could you sense? Man, did you feel the Spirit of God unctioning you? For some of you, you haven't shouted that, 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 like that in a long time since the last World Cup probably, okay? <laughs> But did you feel the Spirit of God? That was, this is what I'm alive for. This is what I'm made for. Right now, I've got to praise Jesus in the presidential office. Over the House of Parliament, folks, we were over there. We were over Cape Town. We were in Pretoria with the worship this morning. There's no limit in space and time when worship is concerned. Amen? Yeah. Folks, you were created for that. That was probably the significant thing you'll do all day today was in unity to dig together declaring the name of Jesus over parliament and over in the presidential office folks that was God we were fulfilling the singing a new song we were singing that with the, the name of Jesus and he says he's praise in the assembly of the of the godly folks it's great that you sing on the way to church along to your, your little worship song but the Bible actually says sing his praise in the assembly of the godly when we come together here, folks, we're fulfilling Scripture. It's not just tradition. It's night. We want to get you in the mood. We want to kind of get the cobwebs out of your head so you can hear the Word. I'm glad that happens, and that does happen. But, folks, we're instructed to sing in the assembly of the godly. <laughs> David wrote this psalm together with many of the psalms, and he gave these songs called the Psalms 150. He didn't write all of them. Many of them, though. And remember, we looked at the tabernacle of, jo of David where he, he instituted worship in the temple, whereas before it had just been sacrifices. That's what we looked at the second one on worship, uh, second message on worship. And to empower them to do that, he wrote psalms. He wrote songs. And he said, guys, this is what you do sing. 
And this is what they did. They came together and they praised God. Folks, when you come together in worship, we are fulfilling the words of Scripture, the unction of the Holy Spirit, anointed by God, to praise Him in the assembly of the godly. Amen? We're fulfilling Scripture. It's not just a tradition, yeah, you know, in our churches we sing and then we have the Word. God instructed us to do it. Amen? And I want to unpack this more. So firstly, just a rewind because... Um, I haven't been doing the series sequentially. The first one was actually before Easter, where we looked at the impact of praise and worship in the first session. And you can go and get it. It's on YouTube, SoundCloud. It's, it's all over. Why do we worship and praise God? It helps you sense God's presence. There's the scripture reference. Reveal solutions we can't see. Helps us remember God's godlikeness. Remember, I know I made up that word, but anyway, it's a good one. Breaks chains and opens doors causes God to fight for us and more. Just some of the things we looked at. Go listen to it. I don't want to cover that ground again. Done that. And then last time we did this, we looked at David's tabernacle. So significant. In the New Testament, uh, the apostle James quoting Habakkuk, I think is from the Old Testament, and he quotes the scripture, says, God is going to restore David's tabernacle. Folks, what we are do, doing here, and in, the, in, the, in Acts 15, the apostles instructed and, and made this declaration, God is rebuilding David's tabernacle. We are part of what the Spirit of God is doing in the New Testament today as we come together in worship. It's so significant. Okay, let's go on. So I want to look at what is the power of praise. Okay, we use the term praise and worship, and it's kind of like, well, they just, they, they, those words go together, lacquer. And you know, praise is kind of those, those fast, upbeat songs, you know, where you kind of you move a little bit in the praise part, and then worship is kind of, that's when you get tired after the, like, the third song, you're kind of tired, you can't move, so then we, got to, we actually got to slow down, we sing the worship songs, because you know, now we're barely there, and now we just sing slowly, okay. So, folks, that is not at all. I want to unpack to you why, the, what praise is, what the word praise means. It uses, David uses it literally hundreds of times in the Psalms. Um, what does this word praise mean? Why do we do it? Folks, we entered into amazing praise. I, I was astounded this morning. Like, I think God knew that, okay, we got to this, pour my spirit out in a, in a spirit of praise and worship this morning because that's what, what I've, I've given, he's given me to speak to you about. So what is the power of praise? Firstly, praise is firstly a faith declaration of who God is, extolling His person, character, attributes, and perfection. Folks, praise is a faith declaration. Now, the significant things about faith, it's got nothing to do with feelings, folks. Faith is a, it's a conviction inside of you of what God is like. I love the fact that we don't praise God just when we feel like it. It's not a, it's something you do when you really feel like it. When you're feeling happy and jolly, you know, then you praise God. No, 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 no. As believers, that's not how praise happens. It's because there's deep convictions inside of us who God is, how amazing He is, how good He is, how faithful He is how merciful He is, how loving He is, and we, it comes out of us in the form of praise, amen? It comes out of our mouth. Our bodies want to declare it. I want to lift my hands. You can't tie my hands down. My hands want to praise God because there's a conviction inside of us. It's a declaration. It comes out of us, amen? Secondly, praise is a faith declaration of what God has done. I mean, you know, you can read the book of Psalms and you kind of figure out, if you haven't read the rest of the Bible, what went before, you can figure out all how God took them out of Israel and the Red Sea and, and all the stories because David, when he was writing these Psalms, he wrote down, he was praising God for this and that and the Red Sea and, and the plagues and everything. You can figure it out. They are remembering what God has done. What has God done for you? When last did you praise God for what he has done for you? Amen. You can share a test me, which Theo did. Yeah, that's awesome. But you know what? How about praising God for the test me that you've got? Amen? And you can recount to him time and time again the things that he has done for you. How about what he did for you at the cross? If you can't think of anything, oh, I don't, can't think of a test me right now, well, just think of the cross. Praise God for what he did for you at the cross. Amen? We all have reason to praise God. You cannot be a believer. Sit here and say, oh, I've got nothing to praise God about. Okay? <laughs> just read your Bible. There is so much that we can praise God about and for. Amen? So firstly, I just wanted to say, it's a, it's a declaration of who God is, 
but secondly, what He's done. Okay, they're two different dimensions. And, and sometimes you're praising God for what He's done, but folks, let's not forget that praise is about extolling God for who He is. How awesome, how amazing He is. Okay, let's go on. Praise is often expressed joyfully through song and with instruments and is closely linked with thanksgiving. Okay? So I want to say you don't need to have song or instruments or be able to play a guitar or drums to be able to praise God. Amen? How many of you, and I know not many hands will go up, praise God in the shower? Okay? There we go. A one kid does. Oh, there are a lot of you actually. But, but, but you know, there's something, haven't you found? The acoustics in the shower is just on another level, you know? <laughs> and also that sense of privacy, the door's closed, nobody can hear you, it's just you and God. The acoustics in the shower is amazing. I also find that singing in the car is so nice, okay? When the windows are closed, of course. <laughs> but um, praise can be accompanied by music, but it doesn't have to, Amen. I was always limited by the fact that, you know, I'm not that musical, I don't play an instrument, until I realized, I don't need an instrument to, to praise God, but it's beautiful if it is accompanied with song, if it accompanied with instruments, it's just on another level, it's awesome, okay. Praise does not become praise until it finds outward expression. While it remains within the heart and the mind, it is admiration. When praise finds expression and becomes vocal or visible, then it is true praise. That's a biblical definition of it. That's why David said, sing to the Lord a new song. He's praised in the assembly of the godly. Singing is an expression. Amen. You hear it. Amen. doesn't matter how good or bad it is. You hear it. Amen. So praise is different. And we're going to look at worship. One of the dimensions, worship doesn't need expression. But praise always, biblically, the biblical definition of praise, it's coming out of you in some way. It doesn't have to be loud, but there is an expression. People can hear it, people can see it, that wow, there's praise coming out of you. Praise is a powerful weapon in spiritual warfare, folks. This, I'm telling you, when, when, when his people was birthed, we were part of that 35 years ago, students at UCT. Warfare praise was constantly one of the dimensions because we were pioneering not just a church we were pioneering a movement and a, a, a pioneering a campus ministry that would go across the nation and into Africa and there was spiritual warfare the devil didn't like what was being started in that campus 35 years ago and he called us to worship and warfare in praise remember how the, the Israelites walked around Jericho and last day they had to shout and praise God amen that's warfare spiritual strongholds tumble when we praise this morning I want to tell you when One got us to praise the name of Jesus over Parliament and in the President's office, that was spiritual warfare declaration. Amen. That was taking hold of uh, spiritual strongholds, uh, forces of darkness in high places over there, and we're bringing the praise of God into those places. Folks, there's sometimes that you need to do spiritual warfare praise over your life. You're kind of going along, you're feeling depressed, you're feeling discouraged, etc. When last did you praise, sing the praise of God over your life? Thank Him for what He's done for you. Uh, adore Him for who He is to you. Amen? It's spiritual warfare. And finally, we can praise a person who deserves honor, okay? I'm saying that because for worship, we never worship another person. Amen? But we can praise a person who deserves honor. I'm just putting that as their little, little disclaimer over there. Okay. When are we to praise God? Sunday mornings, 9.30 to 10, maybe 5 past 10. If it goes past 10, then I'm getting grumpy, okay? Because the word must come, okay? No, 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 no. Let's just look. What does the Bible say? The Bible says... From morning till night. They're the scripture references. As long as we live. Okay? That goes a little bit past 10 past 10. Okay? Because we hope you live past 10 past 10. Are you also hoping you live past 10 past 10 on Sunday mornings? Okay? As long as we live. Folks, praise is not something you do when you're young. You know, kind of, when you're energetic, you know, the youth do praise because, you know, they got, they got energy. But, you know, I'm now, you know, 35. I'm dignified. You know, I don't praise anymore. That's what the youth do. I worship. I've graduated to worship. Ha! That's not what my Bible says. Okay? As long as we live. I remember, I remember just a story of, a, of, a, of an elderly lady, and uh, she was on her deathbed, and she had memorized Psalm 23. 
And the last couple of weeks before she passed, she was just reciting Psalm 23 to herself. And as, as her days got fewer, she could remember less. And eventually on the last day, she could just remember the first line, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. She was just reciting. She was declaring, the Lord is my shepherd. She was declaring it over. And as she got closer to a time to graduate to heaven, she could say even less. And eventually, it was just the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. And the last word she said was, the Lord, the Lord. One word. She was praising God all her days. Amen. At all times. That's what the Bible says in Psalm 34, verse 1. At all times. That means uh, only when you feel good. You know, I've had a great test, me, you know. I passed my exam. Now I'm going to praise God. Folks, you know, praise is a declaration of faith. So therefore, it's not dependent on whether you pass your exam or not. You can praise God before you write your exam. Amen? It's probably the best time to praise God. Amen? It's before you write your exam. Praising Him for who He is, His faithfulness. It's a declaration of faith. Building your faith for your exam. Amen? In times of depression, okay, there we go, okay, just, just to make sure that that would be the most unlikely time in the natural, you would think it's a good time to praise God, but it's probably the best thing for your soul to praise God when you're feeling depressed and discouraged and down and whatever you want to call it. Okay, and finally, in everything, Ephesians 5 verse 20, in everything, okay, not for everything, there are things that happen, folks, that I don't praise God for, I don't blame God for. The devil is, uh, you know, prowls around like a roaring lion. Okay, there's stuff that happens that is not from God, but I'm still going to praise God in that moment. I'm in the hospital bed. I've suffered an accident. I'm not blaming God. I know there's a devil who doesn't like me and wants to steal, kill, and destroy my life, but I'm going to praise God in my hospital bed where I'm tied up in traction and got three casts on my body. I'm still praising God in that situation. Amen. Okay, now... I want to look at Psalm 149. We start with verse 1 of it. And I want to pick out some elements because David wrote this. This is in our Bible. This is your Bible. This is God's manual for life. Amen. So, so when we talk Bibles, you guys are listening up. You're taking notes. Verse 1 says, praise the Lord. Remember, an instruction. It's a command. This is how we roll around. Yeah, We believers, we praise the Lord. Amen. Sing to the Lord a new song, His praise in the assembly of the saints. We've looked at that verse already. Verse 2. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the people of Zion be glad in their king. Remember I said that praise can be rejoicing with song. Look at these words, rejoice and be glad. Folks, there's something about when you choose to praise God that it affects your disposition and suddenly you have joy and gladness inside of your soul because it's focused on who God is. He's always amazing, super amazing, even though you've just failed your exam, okay? You can still rejoice in God and His amazingness and He's going to figure this out. He's going to give you another chance to rewrite the exam or maybe He wants you to do another course. He'll figure it out. We still praise God, amen? We can still rejoice. We can still be glad. That's a dimension of praise. That's why it's so amazing. Amen? It is the, you know, you can kind of pop a pill to make you feel better, etc. Or you could just, you know, the praise pill, okay? It sounds a bit corny. You know, kind of have a praise pill, okay? And let's unlock some, some rejoicing and gladness. I've also underlined there, um, who do we rejoice? Our maker and our king. And up top there it says, Lord. All these words for God. Can you see how it's focused on God? Praise is a declaration re regarding who our God is. So many words. The Bible is full of terms describing who God is. Pick what your favorite term for today and just go for it. Just praise Him for, for who He is. Verse 3, let them praise His name with dancing. Amen. That means you've got a body that can move. Amen. You're 67. You think my body doesn't move. You can tap your big foot, your little toe, your big toe. Okay. That's dancing, okay? When you, some of you are saying, you know, I'm really, I'm really loosening up right now, okay? This dimension of moving your body as an expression of praise is biblical, folks. Remember we looked previously, last time, when we were looking at David's tabernacle, how David danced when they were bringing the tabernacle back into Jerusalem. And he was dancing so, so wildly, he, he, he described himself that, that I will become even more undignified than this. 
In other words, he was recognizing, he was dancing so crazily, so radically, that it was an undignified. You know, how do you dance dignified? Praise God. <laughs> Praise Him. Praise Him. He was dancing undignified. And he said, I will dance even more undignified than this. Amen? Your body, why not use your body to worship <laughs> God? Amen? Okay, that verse is, let them praise His name with dancing. With dancing. You, you don't have to always sing, but your body is expressing joy, admiration. When you lift your hands, folks, that is praise right there. You don't have to say something, I'm praising you, God. Amen. With dancing. And make music to Him with tambourine and harp. Amen. Those were musical instruments they used in that day. If you read Psalms, they list, literally David lists every instrument he could find. And, then, and there's, there's stringed instruments, okay, today would be a guitar, etc. Et a piano is a stringed instrument, for example. And then tambourine is a clashing instrument, okay, a clashing instrument over here. There are various ways we can do this. For the Lord takes delight in His people, okay? <coughs> Just notice His people's biblical, okay? Um, <laughs> He crowns the humble with salvation. Now, here David is remembering something God had does for his people. And so, yeah, he's, there's a reason to praise. He's praising God for his salvation towards the humble. And he's saying, this is what God has done for us, okay? Verse 5, let the saints rejoice. There's that word, rejoice. Rejoice means have joy again. Do you know that? Rejoice. You can have a rejoice again, Amen in this honor and sing for joy in their beds. I love that. You can sing for joy in your beds. You know that's legal, okay? As you say, Pastor, thank you for that one. You know, my husband was just thinking I'm going a bit cuckoo. But anyway, I'm glad I got that one. But folks, do you know that that means, see, Psalm 1, uh, verse 1, he says, praise God in the assembly. Yeah, he's saying praise God in your bed. That your bed is your most intimate, quiet place in your, in your home. In the assembly is loud, public. It's like everywhere. If we're doing that part and that part, it's like we can praise God everywhere. Amen? And verse 6. May the praise of God be in their mouth. Amen, folks? It's spoken. It comes out of your mouth. And a double-edged sword in their hands. Now, a sword is a weapon of warfare. Remember I said praise is a, a, a means of spiritual warfare. What David's talking about here is when there's praise in your mouth, and a double-edged sword in their hand. This is spiritual warfare. This is spiritual warfare. Praise is spiritual warfare. This is one of the speech metaphors he's using. And David knew physical warfare, and he said praise is the same. Praise is the same, yeah. Okay, there we go, just six verses. I want to go on. I want to read a modern-day praise song, and hopefully you guys know this song. It's the song, Raise a Hallelujah, by Jonathan and Melissa Helser. And I just put the words on you. I know you guys are getting excited about me singing like Jonathan. Just hold your horses, okay? My wife gets to hear me in the shower only, okay? Uh, okay, here we go. I, I wanted to read this because it is, I, I was, it was actually one of the songs I was listening to this morning. And I was like, I just love this. There's so many dimensions Think as we read what I've shared with you. And this is a modern day psalm, okay, written by Jonathan Helser. And just the word hallelujah, it comes, it literally means sing the halal to Yahweh. Yahweh is a name for God, okay? The halal was a, an ex exclamation of praise to God that was loud and that was, was joyful and that was a declaration. So if you sang the halal, what we were doing, what Oni was doing was getting us to a lull. When we declare Jesus, 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 that would be the Hebrew word for halal. So hallelujah would sing a halal to Yahweh. Okay, that's what, where the word hallelujah comes from. Okay, so yeah, he's, he's, these, these words, Monday Psalm. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. Remember I said it's spiritual warfare? This is the best place to praise. you kind of feeling you're under spiritual attack. You're, it's down, oh, no, pastor, you know, pray for me. Praise God in that term, in the middle of your enemies. Remember uh, what Psalm 23, he prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies. Amen. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. 
My weapon is a melody, spiritual warfare, amen? My weapon is a melody, spiritual songs. These melodies are powerful spiritual weapons. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm. Ha, I love that. Not just Sunday morning when it's really great. In the Wednesday night when you've just read an email, you got an email from <laughs> whatever, you know, the teacher of your kid, and the teacher is what are wondering about your kid, and you're like, oh, God, oh, the stormy. It's a good time to praise God then. Amen? Louder and louder, you're going to hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated. The king is alive. Next, next part of the song. I didn't put it all up. I raise a hallelujah, a halal to Yahweh with everything inside of me. Folks, with everything inside of me, uh, that's kind of passionate. Amen? That's like people will know you're praising God. Not like, a, I'm praising God. I'm praising God. Amen? Everything inside of you. I raise a hallelujah. I will watch the darkness flee in the middle of his song. I raise a hallelujah in the middle of the mystery. I raise a, the mystery. You, do, you don't always know what's going on. Like, God, why did I fail that exam? I studied. I did everything I could. It's a mystery. I don't know why you failed, but we still praise God in the middle of that. Amen. I raise a hallelujah. Fear, you lost your hold on me. Amen. You got fear issues. Praise God, you'll see fear dissipate. Amen. I just love it. Folks, this is our inheritance. Amen. It's not something we just do on a Sunday morning. Who should praise the Lord? Okay, I'm not going to read the scripture reference. They're all up there, and there are many more. Turner. Who should praise the Lord? The people of God, the righteous, the saints. All different words for you and I. Amen? Um, those who fear the Lord, all men everywhere, everything that has breath. You know, you know that statement that I heard just before we came church planting? It said, missions exist because worship doesn't. We go on missions to unlock worship in people that are not worshiping God, that don't know they were created to worship God and glorify Him and praise Him and, and, and honor Him. We go to people to share the gospel, that they can turn to their Savior, their Maker, their Creator, that they can enter into creation design, that they can find their, one of their greatest purposes in life is to glorify God, praise Him, and worship Him. Amen. Missions exist because worship doesn't. In the next slide, I want to unpack worship. And you know, I had a real problem with worship. The problem with worship was I couldn't get it down to a neat like one-liner or two-liner. I've got like a 17-liner for you. Worship just wouldn't fit into any boxes I wanted to put it into. And I love that. Worship is more than... I was like, I researched a number of places and definitions and descriptions of worship. And they were all so good. I was like, I can't leave that out. I can't leave that. I can't keep that away from these people this morning. So you guys are getting the full dose of all the worship dimensions that I could find. Amen? So sorry, I couldn't, I couldn't put it into a neat box for you, but that's okay. Worship. What is the power of worship? So remember, we talk about praise and worship, and there's a difference, and sometimes, very often, folks, I honestly wouldn't be able to, in a, in, in a worship set, say, okay, now that was praise, and then that was worship. It's, it's, it's a progression, and, and, and there's also there's a reason why often... You start with praise, two or three praise songs, and then do two or three worship songs. It's not just because it's, you know, you're kind of tired by the third song now, and now we need to go slow down. There is spiritual dimensions to this stuff, okay? Worship. The word worship comes from the old English word worthship, which means to esteem the worth. Okay, the worth is the value of something. To esteem the worth of and to make a suitable response to that worthiness. That's where the word worship comes from. Worship, to give him worth, to give him value. Amen? Worship comes from a different place within our spirits. And this is, this is important. I want us to highlight the difference between praise and worship. And it's not that one is better than the other or, you know, I'm more spiritual. You know, I'm now 63. I only do worship. <laughs> you know, you youth, you can do the praise part. Will you praise for us? We'll do the worship for you. No, it doesn't happen like that. It is, this is who you were made to be. This is who you are. This are I, okay? I am a worshiper. I am a praiser. And it's not like when you're young and when you're old. This is who we were made to be, okay? Worship is the art of losing yourself in the adoration of God. Whoa, 
Oh, when I read that, when worship is the art. It's not a science. You know, it's the art of losing yourself in the adoration of God. Worship goes beyond praise in loving, enjoying, and admiring God himself. Worship is the reverent occupation of the devoted heart with its creator. Ooh, I love it. As I said to you, I, I was like, I, 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 it doesn't make me choose. I'm just going to give it all to you. <laughs> Worship is the reverent occupation of the devoted heart with its creator. Worship is the outpouring of the soul in deep expressions of love, awe, wonder, and adoration. I do want to say, you know, it, you can't say, you can't say that, you know, praise is kind of when you're in the shallow end and then worship is the deep end. You know, I'm deep, Pastor. I'll come at quarter two when we go into the deep places with God. No, 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 no. It is a different expression. It comes from a different place within our heart. Amen? Worship comes from the depths. It's based in love and adoration. Worship is deep intimacy with God. But don't tell me praise is not intimate with God. Amen? It's gone. Worship should be reserved for God alone. Matthew 4 verse 10. We've been looking at that. We, we, in the third temptation when the devil came, Jesus spoke to the devil and said, You shall worship the Lord your God only and him shall you serve. And after that, the devil left him. When he realized, ha ha, I'm not going to get that place of devotion in his heart. You shall worship the Lord your God only. We do not worship people. Amen? No man or woman on this planet besides Jesus Christ is worthy of our worship. We can praise men and women if they're worthy of honor, but we do not worship man. Amen? Or anything else on this planet, we worship God alone. Worship should be reserved for God alone. Worship comes from a humble, surrendered, and a devoted heart before God. A humble surrendered and devoted heart to God. Can you see that's a different place to engage with God? You know, often you can be in praise and it's warfare and it's declaration and you, and you, you literally, you, you can feel the authority that you carry in the spiritual realm when you're praising God. When we were declaring to Parliament, could you feel the authority that you were standing in? It's a very different place when we're in a place of worship and we're coming from a humble, surrendered and devoted heart to God. Can you see, the thing is, you, it's coming from a different place in our spirits. Amen? Not one better than the other. It is just different. Worship is a devoted lifestyle, not just an occasional activity. I mean, it's a lifestyle. Again, it's not something where, you know, worship is quarter to ten to ten o'clock, okay? And we, no, worship is a lifestyle. Worship is often expressed with music and instruments, but does not require expression. It's a big difference. Praise, biblically, praise is an expression. But worship does not require expression. You can be lying before God in total silence for hours and be in reverent worship and awe and, and love of God. Amen? Jesus said the Father is seeking those who will worship Him in spirit and in truth. Worship comes from your spirit, and it has to be in truth, in line with God's Word. Amen? Worship comes, and God is seeking those. I mean, God can't stay away from people who worship God. I want to say, who praise Him. The Bible says, oh, Psalm 22, He inhabits the praises of, of His people. He inhabits the praises of His people. God comes down and you praise Him. And here He says He seeks those who worship Him in spirit and truth. That's why, I mean, in this Asprey outpouring, that revival is being sustained through praise and worship. Why? God can't stay away from you when you're praising and worshiping God. I remember hearing somebody saying one day, he greeted somebody, he greeted somebody after praise and worship, and he said to them, Hey, my man, I just want to tell you, praise looks good on you. <laughs> Praise looks good on you, amen? And I want to say, God can't stay away from people who praise and worship Him. Okay, I want to finish, I want to finish with a, a, uh, a, a story. This is from Luke chapter 7, uh, verse 37. And um, just before, before we get into the story, just go back, maybe just go back. Uh, before I get into the story, I was, I was just so encouraged. I was listening to uh, Pastor Steve Murrell, who heads up, uh, every nation family of churches he does a weekly um, devotional 
and it's on YouTube. It's called Think Like a Leader. I encourage you get it, listen to it every week. He posts little videos, and they, they're usually short. I mean, 10, 15 minutes, not long. And last, I think it was last week or the week before, I don't know, two or three weeks ago maybe, he did one on praising God. And he actually, Psalm 149, he was speaking from it. Some of the things I shared with you, if you listen to the YouTube, you'll pick it up. He was sharing in that verse, uh, that chapter. But one of the things why he was talking about it, he said, now, heading up a worldwide network of churches, we have churches in 81 different countries uh, there are people all around the world. And he said he was recently, he had just that week been talking to a, a young church planting couple that were somewhere in the nations, and they were just talking to them, talking to him about some really difficult things they'd gone through. They'd gone through some betrayal. I know nothing except what Steve said, some betrayal, and they were really struggling with very difficult emotions. And it was so interesting. They were talking to him about this. Now, we did the Emotionally Healthy Spirituality Course 2019. So you guys know that God doesn't have a problem with difficult emotions. And actually, in the Psalms, many of the Psalms are laments. And I haven't, I haven't unpacked this yet. We've spoken about it before. A lament is, is, is literally an expression of grief and sadness at experiencing some deep loss that has wounded your soul deeply. And God is okay for you to bring and to express these losses to you. You know, you may fail your exam. And there are times that it's appropriate to praise Him. And there's times that you lament your loss. You know, in life, we, we all go through some major losses. And, and it's, there's, there's times that the biblical response is to mourn your loss, okay? I'm not saying, you know, don't just praise God all the time and don't mourn your losses. Um, and what Steve Murrow was trying to encourage these young people these young church planters, that it's okay to experience those really difficult feelings through, through this betrayal, whatever it looked like. And, and then he went on to speak about praising God. And, and he encouraged them in terms of praising God. He spoke from Psalm 149. And folks, you know, you can be experiencing really deep loss, deep wounding in the soul, and you can still praise God in that situation. And you can spend a couple of min minutes lamenting and mourning your loss and crying out your pain and your grief to God and move into praise. But God, you're amazing. You're on the throne. You rule. You reign. You have been faithful. You destroyed the enemy, etc. That is okay. We can, within a sp sp space of 10 minutes, experience lament and also praise. That's okay. Amen. And here, I want to share this little story now, Luke 7. It is the story where Jesus gets invited to these Pharisees' house for dinner, and he's reclining. Now, remember, in those days, they would lie. Now, if you were here at a Passover dinner, remember that low table? Some of you, if you're sort of over 35, I figured out if you're over 35, you don't like sitting at low tables. I get that, okay? It was a very clear distinction. Some people, I don't know how old they were, but, you know, when sitting on the Passover day, I was like, oh, you're over 35. Okay, I get it. Okay. So... They reclined, and when I say reclined, they would sort of be lying. And so I want you to understand that, because if you think sitting and how did she wash his feet and all this stuff, it, 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 but he, his feet would have been sort of behind him over there. When a woman who had lived a sinful life in that town learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster jar of perfume. And as she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, speaking about Jesus, he would know who is touching him and what kind of a woman she is, that she is a sinner. Now, the Bible doesn't describe what that is. Um, in Bible times, very likely she could have been a prostitute. Verse 40 on the next slide, Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. And I didn't put all these verses. And he proceeds to just tell him, if, if a guy owed someone some debt, one 500 denarii and one 50 denarii, and then he basically wrote off both debts, and he said, which one would be more grateful? And he said, well, obviously the person who has been forgiven the most, the 500 denarii, would be most grateful that his debt was written off. And then Jesus carried on, verse 44, and he said, Then he turned towards the woman and said to Simon. I mean, this is incredible, folks, because she's a woman, most likely a prostitute. Understand 
all the, 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 the social barriers that, sh that, that are between her and this group of people at the table. And Jesus is turning to her as she speaks. He's in his speaking, in looking at, 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 at the way she speaks to her, he's literally, he doesn't physically do it, but he's basically pulling her to come sit next to him at the table, or, you know, as they, they did, sort of lie at the table. Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears, and she wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman, from the time I entered, has not stopped kissing my feet. Folks, why am I sharing this story? For me, this is one of the most beautiful stories of worship. Remember I said worship, and we, one of the ways we, do, we define worship is, is an act of love and devotion and awe and admiration. What in any society does it mean when you kiss somebody? It's a declaration of love. It's a declaration of, of, of devotion, of, of admiration, etc. In any society, you go across the world. This is an act of worship she's doing, folks. She's not singing. Remember I said worship can include singing? Folks, giving, we often say giving tithes and offerings. We're not singing ourselves there, but it is an act of worship. Amen? Let's go to the next slide. Jesus said, you did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. And this per perfume, folks, was valuable. This was money. This was an offering she was bringing as well. Verse 47, therefore I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, for she loved much. But he who has been forgiven little, loves little. Remember, he's just told the story of a guy who was forgiven 500 verses 50. He said, this is what I'm talking about. Then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. Wow, that's amazing. That is amazing. He forgives her sins right there. The other guests began to say among themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? Jesus doesn't talk to them. He says to the woman, Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. This was an act of faith. It was an act of worship. It was an act of love. She loved much. Jesus said, He who has been forgiven little loves little. He who has been forgiven much loves much. Folks, this is a beautiful story of worship. And look what it unlocks. Jesus turns to her. Jesus talks to her. Jesus forgives her sin. Look at the spiritual breakthroughs this woman is getting in her act of devotion and worship. She's getting her sins forgiven. Jesus is recognizing there's faith in this woman's heart, and she's getting salvation. Your faith has saved you, and she's getting peace. She's tormented by guilt and condemnation for, from a sinful lifestyle. She can't go to church because how are people going to look at her, etc. She has no peace. She knew, I've got to get hold of Jesus. I'm going to worship Jesus. I'm going to pour my heart out to Jesus. I'm going to give my all to Jesus. I'm going to give perfume. I'm going to give money. I'm going to just give my all to Jesus. Folks, this was a wholehearted. Folks, tears. Folks, tears. This isn't Hollywood, folks. This was real tears, amen? Not that spray they put in their eyes before they go on set, etc. The real tears coming from deep within her soul as she's repenting and, and crying out to God for salvation. She's crying out to God for forgiveness. She's crying out to God for peace. And it's all happening in an act of worship as she's literally washing his feet with her tears as she's taking her hair and she's cleaning her feet for, with her hair as, as that amazing act of worship. Folks, can you see the wholehearted devotion? Can you see the love? Can you see the adoration? Can you see the awe? And can you see what she gets from God? Folks, why would you want to miss out? Why would you want to come to church at 10 o'clock and miss out on all of this stuff that God gives and imparts to us in times of praise and worship? Yeah. Folks, it's amazing. This is, these are the kind of worships. Remember I said, Jesus seeks these kind of worshipers. He can't stay away from you. You're going to find God breaking out all over your life. If you will commit to a life of praise and worship, folks, this is how we roll as Christians. This isn't something we do on Sunday morning. 
This is our lifestyle, a lifestyle of devotion to God. When I was looking for stories, I was looking for a Bible story that depicted worship. And I was like, this is it. Wholehearted devotion to Jesus. Tears flowing. Love being poured out on Jesus. It's just so beautiful. Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. Jesus, this is the worship. Lord, just deal with all our hang-ups. All our hang-ups, God. Wholehearted devotion. Lord, this woman challenges us. It challenges all our hang-ups, all our proprietary, all our, this is what I must look like. God, may we worship like this woman worships. And may we have breakthrough with you, what she experienced. In Jesus' name. We hope you've enjoyed this message. For more information, please visit our website at www.hispeoplepnb.co.za. And for more of our messages, visit our YouTube and SoundCloud channels, as well as other podcast platforms. If you would like to contact us, please email us at hispeoplepnb at gmail.com or send a message to 061-452-0877. We hope to see you soon. God bless you.